again this is brother Fabio signing in from Canada. I just thought to drop this piece of video that you can watch it and it will it blessed my heart in the morning you know and this one will help you so much so why can't you just come and join me and watch let's see what the video is about <laughs> and my father are one. He's referring to that promise. When he said, I and my father are one, is the word Ekad in the Hebrew in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Dr. Damina, how many God do we have? One. <laughs> what about Trinity? One. <laughs> Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is how many? One. But what about Father, Son, Holy Ghost? One. He's the double-breasted God. He's the all-sufficient one. And if he's almighty, he can be anything he wants to be. So when he becomes Son, he is still the Father. When he becomes Holy Ghost, he's still the person. It's just that in his sufficiency, he can be whatever he wants to be for whatever purpose and for how long he desires to be it. Did he collect from you? He didn't collect anything from you. It is out of him that the father came. It is out of him that the son came. It is out of him that the Holy Ghost came. And all of them are still part of him. And he can decide to make them non-exist and be alone like that. He's all sufficient one. He's all sufficient one. He became all of that for the purpose of redemption. For the purpose of redemption. If there was no fall of man, there would be no father, son, holy ghost. Father, son, holy ghost was to save man. That's a demonstration of God's love. He became son because only son can die. He became holy ghost because holy spirit can live in man. Right, so it solves a lot of mysteries. So when I began to be confused about this doctrine of Trinity, it did not make sense to me. Because every time I ask a question to someone, they would just say, well, Trinity is a mystery that we cannot understand. We'll understand it when we get to heaven. They said, you know, Paul said, we know in the part and we prophesy in part, but when that is perfect, is calm. So don't try to question a lot. Some things are meant to be known, but never to be understood. Instead of answering my question, you know, it gave me billions of questions to answer myself. So I remember struggling with it. I'm like, no, no, no. Now, when you come to North America or to Americas or to uh, Canada, USA, you find this doctrine so much dominant to everybody. They say, you know, the father is not the son. The son is not the father. The son is not the spirit. But these are all one. But it never makes sense. If you say the father is not the son, the son is not the spirit, the spirit is not the father. These are three persons they are all one i mean how does it factor into it never makes sense you, because when you say the father is not the son what you are saying you are saying they are not they are different they are not the same they are different so how do we square it by saying all of them they are one and you know many believers have failed to defend the doctrine of trinity especially when you decide to take that lane of saying you know the father is this is not the son the son is not the spirit these are all one no one understands it and you know there are people they say you know i believe god he is three persons and these persons they are separate they are different and they are two three persons which are very different from each other so they are three gods but god is the father god is the son god is the spirit there is only one god this is sound this is very very uh, solid foundation god is the three persons he, there, there are no three gods there are no three gods as the famous preacher said there are no three gods i love uh what i i think prophet hubert angel once uh, gave an explanation to that even today i really love it he gave this explanation you are a husband you have a wife and you have, and uh, you have children and you you own a company when you go to the company, they say boss. When you come to your wife, she says husband. When you come to your children, they say father. It doesn't mean you are three. You are still one. I once spoke to a Muslim. It's like, do you believe in Trinity? Uh, God is three. I said, no, there are no three gods, sister. She's like, that is strange. How come you don't believe it? I said, no, no, no. Trinity is an explanation of the Bible. God is the father. God is the son. God is the spirit. He is one. And she was speechless when I said that. When you find there are things which are contradictory, then it means it's your failure on your part to understand those scriptures. 
when you read uh, John chapter 8 verse 16 and yet if I judge my judgment is true for I'm not alone but I and the father that sent me said I'm the one that bears witness of myself and the father that sent me beareth witness of me then said they unto him where is thy father 21 I go my way and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sin he's saying something serious 22 and said the Jews will he kill himself because he saith whether I go ye cannot come and he said unto them ye are from beneath I'm from above ye are of this word I'm not of this world 24 i said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins for if you believe i am not him ye shall die in your sins in other words it says if you do not believe i am the father you will die in your sins look at 25 they said who are you and jesus said unto them even the same that i said from <laughs> I am, look, they said, who are you who is talking like this? Jesus said, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. He says, the one who I said unto you from the beginning. Remember, the discussion is about the Father from when we began reading. So the one I was telling from you, who are you? I am that person. <laughs> I am that person who I am speaking about. He says, look. From the beginning, I've been telling you that I am the father. So when you ask me who I am, I am the person who I've been telling you about. Jesus is saying explicitly, I am the father. Verse 27. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. They never understood that he was telling them the Father. Remember, says, I am he, I am the Father. Well, who are you? They say, I am the same I've been telling you from the beginning. They never understood about the Father. Jesus is the Father. At John chapter 14, look at verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Then verse 7 says, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, ye know him, and ye have seen him. From now, you know him, and you have seen him. Saying, The Father is right here. In other words, he's telling Philip, as Dr. Bedamino says, I am the father who you will ever see. Beside me, there is no other father. In other words, saying the father is right here. You know him and you have seen him. The father is here. You have seen him. Verse 8 says, Lord, show us the father and it suffices us. Jesus says in verse 9, Have I been so long with you, yet you have not known me? Even when I'm from telling you that you have seen me, you, I am the father here right now. You cannot even understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So he's saying the first man is Adam, is of the earth. The second man is Jesus, is the Lord from heaven. Look at verse 45. And it, it is also written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So Jesus is the quickening spirit, a life-giving spirit. When you read it, Jesus is the life-giving spirit. So is the spirit is the spirit john chapter 6 verse 63 it is the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing so the spirit is the one that gives life and we saw jesus is the life-giving spirit so jesus clearly jesus is the holy spirit yes jesus is the holy spirit the holy spirit is not some foreign spirit jesus is the holy spirit himself 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17 to 18. Now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord Jesus is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. Glory be to God. The Lord is that spirit. Which Lord? Jesus. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Jesus is that spirit. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 verse 16. I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him. But you know him. You see says even the spirit of the truth. Whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive. Because it does not see him. The world cannot see him. It does not know him. Neither knoweth him. But he says what? You know him. For he dwelleth with you. And shall be in you. He's saying the spirit right now. Is with you. And he will dwell in you. He says right now the spirit is with you. And he shall be in you. In other words he says. He, right now you know him. Right now he is right here. He is right here. You know him right here. And he is the one here. And he will dwell with you. Jesus is clearly saying. I am the Holy Spirit. I am right here with you. And upon my glorification. I will dwell in you. He is with you right away. And he will be in you. 
Then look at verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Remember Jesus is saying I will send the spirit. He will come. I will not leave you as orphans. I will send you the spirit. But who is coming? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So who is coming? Jesus, Jesus is saying when I go I will come. The spirit who is come. It is I. It is I. I am the one who is coming. Jesus clearly says it. He is the father. He is the Holy Spirit. So that thing which they say the father is not the spirit. The spirit is not the son. Throw it away. That's not true. I am who I am which means I will be who I will be. That means if God needs uh, a man to die for the world, he will be the man. If he needs a spirit to dwell within man, he is the one who will come and dwell within man. God is the father in creation, is the son in salvation, is the spirit in dwelling within man. Go and check this video right now.